Hey everyone, welcome back to another tying tutorial here on the channel. We're we'll doing the mole leech today. Really cool pattern, tons of movement. Um, we're going to be doing a black, blue, and orange one. This is a black and purple. We really, really can use a small shank for this fly. I'm going to cut that thing down to probably 12 millimeters. Cone, we're using an orange cone. This is kind of like an egg sucking mole leech pattern we're going to be tying. Throw that in the vise. Perfect. Orange thread. I like to match up my thread to whatever the color of the cone I'm using is, because usually you'll be able to see a little bit of thread. Seriously, you only need to go 16th, eighth of an inch back. This is a super small shank fly. And the fly is not small, but the amount of shank you need to use is. And then we're just gonna cut off, I've got 50 pound power pro here. Seriously, it doesn't matter. Use whatever braid you want. Just make sure that it's you know, strong enough. Don't use 10 pound braid or anything. So we're gonna thread our hook onto this. You know, I'm sure that you guys know how to attach a trailing hook, loop it through. Perfect, and then what we're gonna do is come to this end, and you could do this off of the shank. It's easier for you. I just do it right on the shank. Push it through the back of the cone. And we need, again, we need this thing to be three inches long. I like to tie them about that size. I have some of these that are hilariously big. I made a seven inch one, and then Thread this through the eye of the shank. Push that through, perfect. Now, we're gonna come back the other way. So again, you're gonna go th back through the cone now that you went through the eye of the shank. Pull that tight. Now, you can control how long your fly is gonna be, really. We could have it as long as we want. We'll put, put in two wraps now, just to secure everything. But now we can still mess around with this. Make sure that the top braid is sitting perfectly on top, then two more, and then I like to come through and pull the bottom braid. That just makes sure it's really secure and tight, and now all of that pressure is on it doubling back through the eye of the shank. So you're never going to be able to pull this out. I would bet money on it. You don't even need to go too crazy with your wrapping at this point either. That's super secure. We're gonna come through with super glue and everything after. So I'm fine with that, just like that, perfect. Now the fun stuff. So this is where it gets a little tricky. We're actually tying on braid, super interesting fly. So what I do personally is I take my bobbin holder, put the hook right on it and then pull it tight. Super, super funky fly as far as tying. It's actually really easy though. We are gonna take super glue this one's more liquidy, this one's more of a gel. I like the gel one better. It's a little bit easier to work with in my opinion. It doesn't drip like water. It kinda sits where you put it. Put some right on the eye of the hook. You're not gonna be changing this this hook. It's a one hook fly, which I guess I didn't really go over that. Go over, use whatever hook you want. I'm teaching you how to fish, I'm not giving you the fish here. So have some fun with this. Any color, favorite trailing hook, whatever braid, <laughs> whatever cone, do it how you want to do it. Blue rabbit strip cross cut, little under two inches of cross cut. You don't need a lot because this is just kind of a hot spot at the back of the fly. And we want the fur laying down that way. So we're going to grab this braid, open it up, put this skin inside of that, pull it all the way back to the hook and snug it right up against the eye. And then you're gonna get super glue on your fingers, so don't try and avoid it. Embrace it. <laughs> um, I'm just squeezing that tight, and then I'm gonna actually apply a little bit more. You're spinning this so that as it's laying down, the direction of the crosscut, the fur is going backwards. You also don't have to worry about it being super tight. These actually swim better when you don't go super tight, and definitely don't go over your last wrap. So I'm laying this down in front of my last wrap. If you see at any point that you have super glue that's squeezing out of the back, go in and grab it and pull it forward. So what'll happen is that'll get on the fur and it'll actually ruin some of the fur coming off the back. So there we go. I don't even know how many wraps we've done at this point. We're just doing all of that little half an inch that we laid out, just kind of like that. Trust the initial 
recipe and just go until you run out of super glue and then just cut off the excess. Boom. So that's the principle behind this fly is that you're just doing that all the way up. Now, if I just wanted this whole thing to be a blue leech, just keep going with the blue. You don't need to do two-tone. We're doing two-tone, kind of like this. So we have that purple spot at the back and then black all the way up. This is just going to be blue at the back, black all the way up. So speaking of black, Emperor Black Crosscut Rabbit. Now, you can do this without crosscut, by the way. I've tried it. This head, the red there, is not crosscut. It's still laying back pretty nicely. So that's fine. It is easier. I mean, I did pick out a piece of, you know, rabbit strip that was already had the hair laying down quite a bit. This one, we're going to go longer. So I'm just going to, this is the end of this strip. I'm just going to use the whole thing and save that. You could put that in a dubbing loop for a Klamath intruder or something. So again, um, the worst thing you can do here is put this on this way. <laughs> so you never want the, the fur running towards the head of the fly, always towards the back. So we're going to tie it in this way. And again, same exact recipe as far as just a little bit of super glue fur can be laying back. It doesn't matter which way it's laying back. That's important noting that because you just spin it a different direction. So again, embrace the super glue. Get it on your fingers, tap it down, whatever. It'll come off. Results in more control and better looking fly. Super glue. Pretty much all the way up this um, braid now. It doesn't need to be dripping off in big gobs. It's actually going to harden and it'll uh, take away some of the action of the fly. So again, I'm not pulling this so tight that you know my whole vise is shaking and I'm just kind of loosely wrapping it. The super glue will harden onto this. It's not going anywhere. So you don't have to really worry about that. One wrap right in front of the last. We're gonna follow this all the way up to the top. Now you can start to see the pattern taking shape. This fly has an insane amount of movement. It looks so cool in the water. I actually didn't fish these almost at all for a long time. Smith, AKA Connor, fishes them all the time. Um, I do all the tying for us. He kind of got got me into the idea of trying it. And I tied one and I, I fell in love with the pattern. It's so cool. Now, super glue right onto the shank. Just like that. Take a bodkin. Move it around to the bottom do the same thing boom now this wrap it's the most fun one we're going right onto the shank at this point and we're gonna stop right right at the base of the cone we don't actually need to pull up into the cone because we have some work to do. And we'll do that after with a with a dubbing loop. So pull that tight. I'm tying this down now. I'm tying the actual strip down onto the shank. We're gonna cut off this extra. Boom. Grab that, pull it in. Never gonna see it anyway. The mole each starting to really look like a fly now. We are going to add in our flash. I've got some really cool flash I'm putting on this. I love this holographic flashaboo. I've got blue, purple, and orange. So there's an orange cone, and the blue and purple are just obvious classic combinations. I like to use all three. So we're going to take one fiber from each. 
we got a purple. The way I like to get this stuff out of the packaging too, is just leave it stapled how you buy it from the fly shop. Put your scissors in there and pick out one strand at a time, two strands at a time, however much you need, and just pull it gently. That way you don't have to open it up and pull everything out. I accidentally grabbed two blue there. It's fine, I'll just pull one out. Use that in another fly. And then orange. Boom. So line these up end to end. Perfect. Really cool looking color combo. And we're going to tie these in. I'm going to do my side first. So I'm tying this straight into the side of the fly. Three wraps. And I'm going to take the excess, the tail end of it, wrap it over the other side. One, two, three, excuse me, light turns. I'm just going to look head on and just pull it until it's right on the side of the fly. Grab it once it is. One, two, three, secure turns. Boom. We're in business. So I'm going to take scissors, cut this just past hook length. Now take a piece of your crosscut rabbit strip and throw that into a clamp. And we're going to wrap that around the head. Not much, right? It's about an inch of crosscut. I'm going to make a small dubbing loop twice, secure the base of it. Pull the rest of my thread up under the cone. Low tack wax by Loon. High tack is just too sticky. It's actually inconvenient. OPST dubbing tool. Throw our rabbit in there. Tap short side and get it right as close as you can without pushing it out the other side. Spin this wire brush. Just your fingers. Natural oils from rub it back. This will kind of comb it all one way. You can see that's already kind of sticking that way. And just start wrapping it in. You don't even have to really start right at the base of the fly, because again, this fur is going to cover all that up anyway. Kind of just go straight up into the bottom of the cone. And I really love my cones to be super even. So, I mean, I guess you guys can be the judge of that. It looks pretty even to me. I'm going to one two around the base of that let it spin i don't care go around it one more time boom and then we don't even need to worry about it now cut it off and we're going to whip finish one two three four five pull it tight it's hard to get head cement or super glue under that cone so i do this twice one two, three, four, five. And again, if you can see it, the thread that is, that's fine because we used orange thread, orange cone. You are going to have leftover shank. If you can see that, just come in with your wire cutters, nice and close, cut that. And uh, yeah, awesome. Be sure to subscribe for more tying videos, more steelhead swinging videos. Leave a like if you enjoyed the tutorial. That was in um, quality better than like a 1984 VHS style tying tutorial. Anyways, see you guys later.